Uh, hello, everyone. Hello, Thailand. And I want to say that we did it. Uh, with <laughs> Um, it's my second time in Thailand and the first time in Bangkok. And yesterday we tried to install Party Jam and uh, I found it. <laughs> and I'm not sure that I really want to install it. <laughs> um, so, it's not a first trip to Asia for me and that's why I really know what is jet lag. And it's every time hard because I have no idea wake up at 4 a.m. or go sleep at 3 p.m. And uh, yesterday, um, yesterday I was uh, inspired by team. I really uh, love this game. And I tried to find something in the internet, but I, fortunately I found nothing. And uh, I thought, okay, maybe Quest of Rubist, it's, uh, it's uh, super complicated for Google. And I tried to find uh, Rubinia, but unfortunately, uh, I'm not sure that it will be useful for me. <laughs> uh, so, okay, my name is Anton. Uh, I'm from Moscow. Uh, you can find some contacts. Uh, uh, and also, I'm top tile backend architecture. And uh, that's why I can use this mem. It's uh, my favorite mem about architects. <laughs> Uh, someone know me as a guy who work on Hanami, and it's true. <laughs> um, so, uh, I really love open source. Uh, also, now I'm dry core developer too, uh, a little bit, because I know Piotr, and Piotr know me. Uh, sometimes I make streams on a Twitch, and uh, Usually, uh, you need to know about me something. I really love stickers, and I have a Durian sticker. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I really love uh, some donor or burrito. I have a proof of photo. It's me uh, in Minsk. It's near with Russia. I'm eating a burrito. And I really love this photo because on this photo, I look like a person who go to some uh, Japan TV show. <laughs> And if you want to talk with me, we can talk about coffee, beer, uh, psychology. I have Nintendo Switch, uh, 3DS, and I really love to draw some images for my presentations. And the first one was drawn by me. And also, I really love stories and bad stories. And um, I tried to write something and make a really good story. I expected that uh, I'll be like this guy. Uh, but unfortunately, reality was a little bit different. And uh, I'm a lucky person because I got a help from my friend. Uh, I really love him. His name is uh, Georgi. And uh, he's really quiet and uh, love asks sometimes some questions. And also, he's a flower. <laughs> um, so, uh, the title of my talk is uh, Events. Uh, we discuss after party, and uh, now we will discuss events in general. Uh, we have a real world, and in the real world, we have a lot of different events. Uh, it can be anything, and sometimes, as a developers, we need to catch it and do something with it. Uh, for example, we have a Git. Uh, who knows what is it? Okay, uh, so uh, in Git we can say that each commit is something uh, that happened. And for example, I have uh, Hanami contributions application. We have a list of uh, commits. It's uh, something which was happened with this repository. And uh, each commit contain uh, description and changes uh, and some meta information. And for example, if we open any commits from this repository, we will see that uh, something what happened. Uh, it's the name of this uh, commit. Uh, we have a payload, like a change of files and the lines of these files, and also we have a meta information like uh, when, who, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, another example of events it's uh, uh, what happened with the user who tried to buy something in a e-commerce shop uh, application. Uh, we need to track. Uh, 
what exactly he added to order or maybe who, uh, what deleted from this order. Also, sometimes we need to work with uh, activity audit and uh, my favorite part is uh, don't delete deleted data. Um, who have uh, this field in database? Um, so, uh, unfortunately, in our applications, we work with the current state. Uh, it means that uh, we need to know what uh, happened with our application on current moment, not in the past, not in the future, only in current moment. And in this case, we can say that our events, it's our actions, when we call some controller actions or something like this, and our current state, it's... Uh, our data in database. It can be different databases. Uh, the most important is that we store current data in database. And uh, so, uh, I really love uh, JRPG, that's why I made it like a JRPG. So, and uh, Georgi asked it what we'll do if we uh, change it a little bit and start uh, storing events instead of current data and uh, make something like git. In, in this case, we will get event sourcing and today we will talk about event sourcing in general and uh, the first rule of event sourcing, nobody knows about event sourcing. The second rule of event sourcing is uh, you need to store uh, what happened with your application or maybe some aggregate or domain logic instead of uh, storing current state. And uh, after that, you can take specific state uh, only when you need it. <coughs> uh, so the first question which you can ask uh, where we can store something, where we can store this list of events or a chain of events. And uh, uh, even in event sourcing, we have uh, event storage. Uh, and uh, event storage can be anything. Uh, it can be Redis, it can be Postgres, Datomic, Kafka, MongoDB, Oracle, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, event storage has some rules. Uh, the first one, event well, event happened, and uh, it was some time ago. We have no idea how long, uh, how many time uh, ago it was, but it was. Uh, so the next uh, rule is. Uh, Immutable events, it means that we can't update or change or delete or do anything with events. We can just create one and that's all. Uh, and in this case, we really can delete or update event. And for example, we have event store, it's a list of something. Um, and we put, uh, so how it works with event storage in general, we have events uh, storage, uh, we put some event. For example, it's a user created with some name. After that, we say, okay, we need to update user, update his name to something else, and uh, it's how it works. Uh, we can't go back and change something in the past, but we can create something new in, a, in current moment. Um, the next problem and the next rule of event storage, it's uh, uh, we need to work only with valid data in events. Uh, it means that uh, we have a client, we have web application and some uh, database. Uh, we try to send event. In our web application, we start validated. And if uh, everything is okay, we can store it and say, okay, we can store this event or we need to raise exception, uh, response error or something like this. Uh, the second uh, rule is uh, data evolution. Uh, and uh, what does it mean? It means that we have events, uh, event store um, and we try to put some event like a first name, it's something. Uh, we need to remember that we have a first name, but in future uh, our managers told us that we need to store not a first name, we need to store full name. And uh, we can't uh, delete or update previous events and it means that we need to remember that uh, we need to update some, we need to work with uh, different data schemas of events in the same time, and that's why we need to remember about data evolution. Um, yep, yeah, we can break uh, the application, and uh, to prevent this stuff, 
uh, we can use specific technical uh, t techniques. Uh, for example, we can use optional fields. Uh, we can use uh, binary data structures with uh, um, uh, with uh, compatibility levels like Avro or something like this. And more examples you can find in this really good book. Uh, who know what what is this book? Uh, so, okay, if you're interested in uh, data and some distributed applications, I really recommend this book. Uh, we will talk about this book a little bit more in this talk. And uh, the next question, how we can get state from event store. Uh, we have event store with some list of events, and now we need to take uh, state. And uh, we can calculate it. Uh, and for calculating it, we can use uh, projections. Uh, and uh, usually projections is a function which take uh, projection. Projection is uh, same as a block or in, uh, same as a block. And uh, we put a list of events and initial state and uh, uh, calculate uh, some specific state. Uh, and in this case, uh, project function is a pure function. And uh, it's extremely similar to each with object uh, because each with object uh, works like this. And uh, we can change project fun function to something like this. And it's absolutely the same. And how it works, uh, we have event store. We put the first uh, event uh, when user created with some specific name. After that, we create one more event that the user was updated. And uh, we start uh, calculate a state of this user. And for this, we, we go to the first event, uh, try to find something, we we'll find that user was created with a specific name, uh, go to the next event, and uh, next, and next, and next. And after that, we will see that uh, user updated his name to something else. And uh, uh, the problem is that it looks really slow. And, uh, we need to recalculate uh, current state every time when we call this stuff. Uh, and uh, um, so, and uh, yes, we can store events last 10 years, maybe two years. We can have a lot of different events, and uh, it can be really hard to calculate it in Ruby or maybe in different, uh, in other different languages because it's performance issues, but we can fix it. And uh, for fixing it, we can use uh, abstraction, we call it streams. And uh, how it works, uh, for example, we have uh, uh, two different ICE bus buses, and uh, we have a lot of events uh, for each bus uh, in this case. And for example, we have two events for first bus and uh, three events for the second one. And uh, each bus has a uh, identity number, like uh, number one, number two, or something like this. And we can say that, uh, A, uh, I want to put all uh, events related to the first bus uh, in a specific stream. And after that, I can just take only related to this bus streams and uh, make same stuff for the next one. Um, uh, in this case, we'll take less events for processing, and instead of processing uh, all events from database, we can process only 10, maybe 20 events uh, for specific aggregate. And also, we can, uh, per we can make a parallelization for calculations of state and uh, start a uh, calculation state for two different aggregate aggregators uh, in the uh, same time. Um, but the problem here is uh, we need to introduce one more abstraction. And uh, uh, the next uh, idea how we can uh, improve this, uh, this idea with getting state, we can create a snapshot of, of the current data state. And uh, for example, we have a projection function uh, it's a pure function, and the idea here, we can put any state into state uh, attribute. It can be empty state, or it can be some pre-calculated state uh, from the past. And uh, how it works, uh, we can put event into event store. Uh, after that, uh, take it from our application, calculate state, put the state to different database, 
And uh, after that, when we need to uh, show the state to user, we can just uh, show it from the database. It's called SQRS, and we will talk about it a little bit later. Uh, and now, uh, the general benefit of this idea is uh, we can use any kind of database as a cache. It can be really anything. And uh, we can use different databases for cache because in some cases we can use relation database uh, for, uh, for searching and uh, for index page when we need to return a lot of uh, list with a lot of information and uh, for example we can use documented oriented database for show a full page like a linkedin uh, do with a page with your profile so uh, let's talk about real world and uh, where it can be useful uh, i found some uh, examples where it can be really useful for example it's e-commerce systems in e-commerce we have a order and checkout flow and uh, in this case, we need to remember what happened and what exactly we did with it, because uh, in this case, we can easily debug it or uh, recalculate state for the previous time or something like this. Uh, event sourcing is really popular in uh, places where we work with money. And, uh, and also, uh, it's the most common uh, example. Uh, if you have, uh, if you need to uh, version control, like uh, Wikipedia Docs, uh, Google Docs, uh, group editing, uh, event sourcing can be useful here too, because you can travel back in time uh, and recalculate the state every time. Uh, and uh, also, uh, some domains uh, contain event sourcing by default, for example, it's a tracking system, or if you're talking about some uh, stuff which show how uh, games uh, was done, uh, we need to calculate when uh, someone make a goal or something like this. Uh, we can use event sourcing for the systems too. And um, so, uh, if we're talking about Redux, uh, um, we can say that event sourcing and event driven architecture is a little bit different thing. And uh, Redux, uh, uh, you can start think that Redux is event sourcing, but uh, unfortunately, it's event-driven architecture because uh, uh, because uh, they use events in a different way. In uh, event sourcing, uh, we uh, store what happened in the system. In event-driven architecture, we uh, event happened, and uh, everyone will be know about this. And uh, in this case, it's a little bit different. Uh, way to work with it because uh, event sourcing can be synchronous, uh, event-driven architecture is asynchronous by default. Um, so yes, uh, blockchain is a good example how event sourcing can work. Um, and some pros and cons of all the stuff, uh, the first one is uh, uh, easily to communicate with domain expert because uh, you need to remember how business events works because usually in event sourcing we work with uh, business events. Uh, we got logging out from Box. It's extremely critical for uh, places which are related to money because we can audit uh, what happened with some customer or something like this. Uh, we got time traveling uh, and uh, the most interesting stuff, we can restore system state every time when we need it. And it means that, uh, for example, we have two databases, one with events, the second one is uh, uh, Postgres uh, for searching or something like this. And when uh, Postgres will down, like in GitLab a few years ago or something like this, we can just easily recalculate the stuff and state and uh, just put it into a database. So, uh, and uh, also event sourcing in general change a little bit uh, mindset because uh, we don't need to work and think about uh, tables. Uh, we work with changes and events in general. Uh, and in this case, we can use any data structures uh, which we want to use and easily change uh, database implementation. For example, we play it with uh, Elasticsearch, understand that uh, we need to use some relation models and uh, move everything to my SQL database. <clears throat> and also, event sourcing has a lot of cons. Uh, I found 
five slides of cons uh, or something like this. And the most uh, the most terrible cons is uh, uh, it's it's a really complicated abstraction and it's not popular in Ruby. Uh, and uh, in this case, uh, you need to explain it more and more. And also, developers need uh, deep programming more. Uh, so it's uh, really hard to get the state rises and crude. If you try to build a block uh, with event sourcing, uh, you will spend more than 15 minutes on this. Uh, and uh, sometimes it's really hard to understand a uh, whole chain of events because uh, you have a lot of different stuff in your system. Uh, and uh, it's not a uh, uh, it's not a current state, it's just the changes and you need to understand what exactly happened. Um, so, uh, also we have a problem with version and version compatibility, uh, because if we will change something, we need to support the different uh, compatibility levels, it can be backward or forward compatibilities, uh, and also we can't uh, update or, deleting or delete events and uh, if you live in Europe, for example, it can be hard for you because in Europe everyone can go for you and say, hey, please delete all information about me and uh, um, you need to do something with it. Uh, so, and uh, I have some advanced topics uh, to cover some questions. Uh, the first one is uh, how to display created data as soon as possible. And we have two different solutions for this. Uh, the first one is a cheat user. Uh, how it works, uh, we have a client, a web application and database uh, with events. We don't want to use uh, read and write models. And uh, when a user send the event uh, to our web application, we validate it and uh, put it into database and on our client uh, stuff we show the data like we have in a database. Um, and the second one, it's a web socket and web sockets and long pooling uh, approach and uh, it's a little bit more complicated. Uh, so the next question, it's uh, my favorite question, uh, how to make uh, right events order and uh, why it's important? It's important because we have uh, more than one application and uh, one database. And for example, the first one try to send event, the second one try to send event. And what exactly uh, we will do with this situation? We need to introduce some distributed logs. We need to introduce a lot of different stuff. And uh, I want to say hello to distributed systems and uh, suggest this book again. Uh, and also this talk with Vrot Software B from this year. It was really good and this guy explained a lot of stuff around uh, distributed logs and etc. Cetera, et cetera. Um, so I made this talk in Europe and one of the questions was how to delete uh, user-related data because in Europe you can do it. And um, we have two approaches. The first one is uh, uh, retroactivate event. Uh, you can read uh, Martin Flower, Flower blog about it. And the second one is uh, uh, encrypt everything and lose a data key. <laughs> uh, so, uh, and also, uh, one more question was like, uh, we have a list of events. Uh, how to search some information. For example, we have a list of events about uh, users or something like this, or, or maybe orders, and we need to find some specific order by specific uh, name or something like this, and uh, how we can do it. And the most easiest way is uh, QRS and write and read models, and I'll explain what is it a little bit better on the end of my talk. And uh, let's talk about Ruby finally. Um, we have this abstraction and we want to implement something like this in Ruby and how we can do it. We have a simple way, it's uh, libraries. Uh, the first and I think the most popular library for this is uh, Rails Event Store from Arkansas and folks from Poland. Um, the second one is uh, Sequent. Uh, they have a lot, of, uh, a lot of stuff around this library and my favorite is uh, Eventude Project because they have uh, really a huge list of features and uh, a lot of different stuff. 
Also, we can use Braveway uh, and uh, build everything uh, by self. Uh, and, uh, for example, we, if we want to use Kafka as event storage, we can use Kafka. It's a really good library uh, built by Magic. Uh, and uh, I really recommend this library if you work with Kafka. And in, in the next version, it, it will be uh, much better. Uh, or you can take a pure Kafka adapter and build it by self, or made it by SQL. Uh, without any problems. And I have some experimental uh, repository. You can see how it works in real life. Uh, and uh, if you know Japan language in Japan, uh, they have Ibento, it's uh, mean events. And in my case, it's Ibento, which means nothing. Uh, so, and also I have zero tests for this library. <laughs> it's a production ready library. <laughs> um, so, um, let's try to explain how we can migrate from someone, uh, some existing part of code. And, uh, for example, we have, uh, we have uh, action where user adds something uh, to, to cart, uh, to our order, and we have Hanami action uh, with different stuff. For example, we need to validate our params after if a cart exists, uh, uh, create, if cart exists, create copy. If uh, it doesn't exist, create a new one. After that, send something into analytics and redirect uh, our to order path. And uh, so the first step is uh, event storming. Uh, event storming is a really important technique to detect uh, business events in a system. Uh, a lot of folks make some uh, uh, make some. Uh, uh, workshops around uh, how it works. Uh, they use a lot of stickers and it looks really fancy. Uh, and uh, after event storming, uh, we can understand that we need to use two different events. The first one is uh, item edit and uh, the second one, copy item edit. And uh, the next step, we need to start apply our events or store it in a event store. And for this, we can use event store dot apply. Uh, and put event with a full payload after into this event storage after validation. Uh, so the next step, how to uh, make a business validation. Uh, on business validation, I mean this stuff, because we need to validate that uh, this item exists or not. And uh, we need to calculate state. And for this, we can use... Uh, uh, we need to, uh, we can use uh, we can take a stream for a specific order uh, take a list of events and after that use a project function uh, with specific projection uh, and uh, uh, and it's look like this for example we have two different events and initial state and uh, when we take one of these we put uh, something into state uh, or or when we take other event, we put something else into state. After that, we can uh, calculate all events and uh, ask, uh, do we have this uh, item or not? So, and uh, the next step is subscribers. Uh, it's subscribers. Uh, it's something like a similar pops up. We can put everything. And I'll start talking faster because I have only two minutes. Uh, so, and uh, after that, we can move logic into domain, and that's all. And uh, we can use uh, event sourcing only as a part of our system. For example, we don't need to uh, store events based on user, but we can store events based on order. And what's the next? The next is Sega. Who knows what is it? Uh, sorry, but we will talk about Saga. Uh, Saga pattern, what is it? It's a long business transaction. Uh, it's like a railway programming, but uh, more about distributed stuff, uh, and usually sometimes it's, uh, it looks like a state machine. Uh, the next stuff is my favorite part. It's uh, common query responsibility uh, segre segregation, and uh, some, uh, some Martin Flower here. And how it works, uh, for example, we have a crude operation, and in one updating or deleting, we put something into database. Uh, with SQRS, we have uh, 
we, we are reading from we're reading from query database, and uh, when we need to update, create, or delete something, we put everything to common side database and create events for updating query database. Uh, I have 10 slides, just quick. So we have a uh, right model, you can find it here. Uh, so let's, the most important stuff is look outside Ruby, uh, because uh, if you open an open, awesome project, you will see nothing about Ruby. I created something about D event sourcing and DDD again. Uh, and uh, so when I read this book the first time, I, I look like this guy. And it's really important because we are talking about business events in general and distributed systems. And I can suggest this book, this one, this one. And uh, conclusions. <laughs> I have only. No, it's. it's uh, so, okay. Uh, the most important part here is uh, this one. Uh, it's really expensive and uh, nobody know why they use it, but uh, sometimes when you understand that you want to solve this problem with events, it will be better if you'll use event source and crisis something else, but it can break your startup or application, or, and uh, after that you will be fired. And. Uh, so, and uh, I think event sourcing will be a trend in the future, and uh, if you don't trust me, please trust Andrzej. It's a guy who made event sourcing, uh, Rails event sourcing gem, and uh, that's all, finally. Big thank you to Antov. <laughs>